Madeline. Um, hey. I wanted to meet with you today because uh, I heard you sharing some ideas in uh, a separate meeting and I was really interested in those ideas and I wanted to hear more. So I was hoping you might be able to talk to me more about them. Um, of one, of, <laughs> one of the things that you said was about this idea of innovation and how going for what going forward looks like in some ways. So I've heard like two different sentiments about this across campus and it seems like they're opposed but I'm not convinced they're opposite or even mutually exclusive. So on one hand, we have instructors and possibly even students saying, we need to go back to classrooms. I need to be in front of students where I'm more effective and I can do this and I can do this personal connection. And the other sentiment is how we can continue with online versions of what we used to do and expand our virtual learning spaces. And so these seem in opposition, but I'm not convinced of that. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, that's a really good point. And I actually agree. I don't think they're in op opposition. I think that they could be linked together in really innovative ways. So if you think about the pieces of what was, what do you really like about being in front of students? So is it really the, the two hours of just kind of going through theory and, and talking through things like that? Or as an instructor, are you just really interested in saying, hey, what are the, the, the questions that you have about the topic that you read about? And so I think that most profs are kind of on the, the ladder. They're the ones that want to have those critical conversations. They want to hear from students. They want to engage in more of that higher level synthesis of information and thought provoking types of examples that are outside of maybe the textbook. So I think that's what we really like about that in-person piece. So I often wonder is, you know, what is it that we could keep in the online space and then in say the in-person either like this in a synchronous way or actually physically on campus of the parts that we really like. So for my class, what I really like to do is, you know, give them some readings, have them watch a, a lecture on a TED talk of the topic, maybe go through a few questions and uh, maybe look at some news articles and things about a topic. But then when we come together, it's the discussion of these topics. I ask them to bring the questions for me to answer or to stimulate discussion. So I, yeah, like you said, it's not the that these two kind of things are opposed. I think what we need to do is just mesh together some of the great online with some of the great in-person, be it in person, in person on campus, or be it online. So I think they, they could work together. Awesome, yeah, thanks for that. Cause I was, I've been really thinking about that a lot lately about how the possibly the blending of those things are the most, it may be the most powerful way or the most innovative way we can do that. So the other thing I thought when, when you were expressing some of the things you were talking about in the last meeting was this that that uh, sort of truism or that cliche popped into my head that necessity is the mother of all invention, right? That and 2021, 2020 and 2021 has required that of us. So like at the, we require adaptability and flexibility and we're requiring a lot of innovation in what we're doing, um, even if it is just to plunk things. Um, but in our online gallery gives us some examples about um, how that's worked out but I was wondering if you could talk to us about how those kind the how the adaptability and the flexibility and innovation has worked this year from your perspective and in kind of a reflective way yeah that's a good question and I think what I what I would like to kind of think about with that is when you're given the space to actually take risk or engage in innovation and even though it wasn't really a given space it was just a you're pushed into that space to have to come up with things uh, it grew, different kinds of ideas can grow from that right that we totally. need to look at it in a critical way and say okay this was great like i tried it i was scared but it worked out really well and i think i could keep that and i could keep going on it 
Or you might look at something and say, that didn't work like I thought it was going to work. And we're in a place to say, it's okay. Like, I would love to tell every instructor, you know, whatever innovation you tried, if it didn't work out, that's all right. What could you, what do you glean from that as a learning? What can you do to improve it for the next time that you would deliver this course? Because we might be delivering it, well, some, most are delivering online in the spring, summer, and there may be some in the fall. So instead of looking at it as, I absolutely hated that. I never want to teach online again. Instead saying, what is it that I could change to make it just a little bit better and do this again next time, but with some tweaks. And I think that's where uh, it's it's kind of neat that we've be, been able to create that environment to allow for innovation. But now it's how do we support you to think about how to fix what didn't work and keep going with what, what, what did work. Absolutely. And one of the other thoughts I had in response to th this conversation and this larger conversation about in innovation is that space for not necessarily failure, but it not to work the way we expected or to have obstacles and hiccups along the road and what we get out of that, right? Like that I I'd love for us to be able to let go of the, the, the feeling of failing and see it how we're trying to teach it do you know what i mean like yeah absolutely and i think some of the your key learning comes from failure right if you never fail like i don't know how people can really advance if you didn't fail you would just stay stagnant i think so you know if there's something that you can do to get better and that's where i think we should harness our understanding and my student just finished her thesis looking at uh what we can learn from failure in experiential education opportunities and it was that whole idea of having a safe space, that psychological safety to fail, which helps to drive learning and innovation. So I think for us to be able to support instructors and say, you know, you tried it, it didn't work, but that's okay. What did you learn from that? And how do we make it better? Is if we could just kind of create that culture around our teaching and learning uh, in the online space right now, I think we'd be, we'll be miles ahead in the next few months. Totally. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's taken the pandemic for us to be able to create that space for ourselves. Like it's it's OK to try and it not not necessarily to, to fail, but it's it doesn't work out the way you were hoping. And I've seen that happen a couple of times. And it's interesting to be able to sort of say, OK, well, maybe it didn't work because of A, B and C. And maybe it would be a, a better thing to do in a different space virtually or physically, like maybe this would work in a different way kind of thing. So yeah. for sure. And oftentimes a crisis creates that opportunity to change, right? There's, you know, you can either harness that and say, hey, you know, it's an opportunity for me to rethink things and do something a little differently because I don't have a choice or I've always wanted to, but I just didn't feel like I was in a safe space to do that. But now you can. So right. I, I think some people were even like that with online because we've been talking about having more online courses. And so now it's you tried it. Did you like it? Didn't you? If you liked it, maybe you keep one or two of your courses online and maybe one or two are on campus. Whatever that looks like that works for you as an instructor is really key. So having that crisis has provided an opportunity in a sense to help us grow this this uh, innovative pedagogy, I think. Yeah, and I love I love that idea. I love sort of framing it in that way. I love the fr the idea of framing it as a harnessing of what we've been able to get through and be through and what we've done. I love that idea that we're sort of reframing that as a I was trying to do that, but I'm glad you did it for me. But <laughs> and I don't question. always like to say that there's an opportunity in a crisis, but if we have, we're here, we, we're we given what we're dealt. And so how do we, you know, make uh, some good things come out of this for, for higher education? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So in terms of online and innovation and things like that, I know going back, if there's, if there's, I hate saying going back because it doesn't feel like we're going back. It feels like we're going forward, just that the forward might include some in-person stuff. Um, so when we go forward, can you talk to me about the idea of innovation and teaching innovation? Because many of us right now are equating that with like digital or online solutions or I have to be online to be innovative. Can you talk to me about what else you think about that? 
Yeah, I don't think technology is the the innovation, right? I think technology allows us different types of innovation. It might be that you have a different type of assessment technique, and that's an innovation in pedagogy, right? You might have a different way in yeah. which you're delivering in on campus, in person uh, activities that you might have not done in the past. Maybe you do use a you know a video, or you might use uh, different types of technologies in the class for students to engage with. Um, you might also do something that's more of like a flipped classroom, which is kind of what I was talking about before, where the students are, in a sense, have to do the readings before they come so that they can engage in those critical conversations. So I think it's the innovation can be per, um, kind of harnessed and, and, you know, a little bit different with technology, but it doesn't have to be that. It can just be innovations in the way in which you approach your teaching. Yeah, um, and I think if I can be selfish here for a second, one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of like my own teaching practices, especially having this larger, larger and broader view that I have, is that I started thinking about the idea that um, conversations were as important as anything else. And that just because I can't have those conversations with students, that I can have them with other people online and have these conversations and hopefully be able to communicate through a conversation as much as a, here, this is the information you need <laughs> kind right. of delivery, right? And I was yeah. thinking, well, is that pushing us in innovative ways too? Like, is that where we're going with innovation is just breaking the mold of this is what this looks like all the time, right? Exactly. And that idea of, yeah, we don't just have to stand up and do a two hour lecture and students are going to learn. Like, I actually don't think they learn all that great that way. I think the, the way in which we engage them in critical conversations allows for that. And some might say, well, how do you do that in a big class of 200 or 300? But hey, say, turn to your friend beside you and talk about this question. And then, you know, there's different ways that you could also use technology in the classroom. Most have a computer or have a phone. And could you make like a, you know, something that goes up onto the board? So you're using that technology even in an in-person kind of course that allows for those critical conversations and thinking. So, yeah, I think, like you said, like this is spurred on different ideas of how we've used technology that could be just still in online or in person, really. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that there are conversations I'm having now that I like this one that I have to videotape. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to use them again. Like they're great critical conversations, right? Yes. Um, yeah, and I'm fascinated by that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other question I have, and I don't know whether this is a surprising question or not, is that the other thing that I've been really thinking about, especially in response to um, how you were talking about innovation one day was this idea of measuring and evaluating where we're at and it might be connected to that idea of a safe space for failure like that how do we talk about measuring matrices or measuring sticks if we want to call them and evaluations of teaching in this space where it's 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 okay that it hasn't worked out or that something may have gone so spectacularly well i i'm fascinated by like how are we going to measure how do we see that how do we imagine it how do we reflect back on it those are all the things that i'm kind of thinking about as i'm going through this process yeah so as you know we have like your student experience course surveys so those are one piece that you might find that maybe your scores go down and i wouldn't be surprised in some areas for me and it might go down because I wasn't really focused on that as much as I might have been in the past. So we have those quantitative pieces, but I think the other piece is uh, formative uh, assessment. Like if we can do the formative and the summative, like you're doing some in the middle of the semester. So I even sent out a, a little survey to my students and said, hey, how's this going? What do I need to do more of? What do I need to do less of? And that just helped me kind of rethink, okay, I've still got a few more months. What can I make a little, do a little bit better? And so we have to think of what are good metrics to drive change and improvement, but also harnessing good stories. So, you know, if a student sends you an email, you know, keep that email for your dossier, but also keep it just to fill your own soul of saying, you know, they actually really enjoyed that class. And so even if you get one great story from one class that semester, you've done a great job to get things rolling, continue to, to try to move towards that. So I think there's those, 
you know, real metrics, uh, but then there's also the stories. And there's going to be stories of lower enrollments. There might be stories of more drop students dropping courses. But as an instructor, you can't always make that your thing because students are, are making different decisions for themselves because of their own life situations. So we have right. to be careful what metrics we apply to our own self and our own courses and our own teaching, but hold on to the good and always be reflective of the things that you could do better on. Absolutely. I like to call those um, those stories that you get in response to your teaching is the return on investment. This is the, my yes. return on investment. That, Absolutely. Yeah, this feeling that this is the thing that fills fills those those gaps. These are the light bulb moments that we're looking for. And and that's the the fulfilling part of the teaching part. And, uh, Absolutely. I know when I get a, an email from a student and I got one the other day and I was like, they didn't have to send me that. It was just so nice. They were like, hey, that class was really fun today. Like, just thanks. So you could tell that they were just, you know, feeling like better about the whole online situation and, you know, getting a feel for things. And it was just a nice story to hear. So, you know, you're making a, a difference, even with one really great class. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So speaking of stories, um, is there one story that you that stands out to you or do you have a stories? I know we have some other examples in our online gallery. But do you have a, an, a story of your own teaching or another teaching moment that you've heard that might sort of give us that sense of how you might see things going forward or this idea of innovation and how it might work in that safe space? Mm -hmm. um, so I have one right now that um, I'm, I'm just kind of started going on in the last week. So the one thing I think we have to do in this environment is as much as possible, be flexible and nimble and be able to modify things on the fly. And so something for my class. So my class is a very applied class. They have been working on service learning projects, but in a virtual environment, they're still going great. Probably not as, you know, fulfilling as we would have liked in some cases, just because of, you know, an outbreak started again and they couldn't go into their sites. And that's OK. So I was talking to some friends at Public Health and they were talking about the mass immunization um, clinics. And so I kind of said, like, this is exactly what my students learn. They learn about flow. They learn about quality. They learn about process, efficiency, student or uh, patient centered. And so what I've actually done is I, I looked at my course outline and I said, all my learning objectives are about change, leadership, quality improvement, healthcare. I'm like, what better opportunity than to have my students work on pretend, well, they're not pretend, they're going to be helping to support public health flow of mass immunization clinics across the municipalities in Niagara. So I basically said, okay, we're gonna scrap all of this for the rest of the semester and we're just going to do this. And I was like, if if I wasn't that person that would just say, you know, let's give it a risk, let's give it a try, you know, what else, like, you know, why not? And I mentioned it to my students, I asked them if it was okay, and they were like, oh my gosh, please let me do this. This is cool, like this is real life. Like I might actually help to influence some things that happen in during COVID. So it was something that's going to feed their soul, but then also they achieve all their learning outcomes. So I guess my story related to that is that as long as you're achieving the outcomes in your course and if your student your students are okay with you changing maybe the scope of some of your assignments if they're if that's possible why not like take a risk do something a little different a little cooler because I could tell they were kind of getting you know another module another forum it's a year-long course so I was like let's just change it up and the renewed energy that came out of this class awesome. was just amazing awesome so, yeah, that sounds <laughs> that sounds fantastic. But I think that's the these are the spaces we're in right now. These moments where we can, like you said, take the risks. We can push ourselves and push our students. And that there's some really fantastic opportunities for learning, both within the process of that and the outcomes of it. Right? Like that's huge. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that should be fun. Very fun. Okay, so last little final thing. I know this is sort of a traditional weird final thing. I don't know if you're going to be able to do it in 30 seconds or whatever. But um, so if you were to characterize how you would move it, how would you how you would see us moving forward in a few final words, what would you say? 
flexibility. Um, I still like the, the term hold the gains. Whatever you gained through this experience, hold on to it and figure out how you can use that going forward. I know that's more than five words, but I would say hold the gains, <laughs> flexibility, and uh, openness to innovation and uh, future growth, really, and, and thinking of how you can harness that as, as an instructor. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing with this with me today. I really appreciate the conversations. That was great. Happen. Great questions. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Okay.